Hi everybody, this is Tor Stoli and I am back with another video. I thought in this video we should take a closer look at how you can work with Python in R Studio. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you how you can run Python inside R Studio. So if you go to Tools and you go to Global Options you can go into this Python menu and when you look over here it says no interpreter selected. What I want to do is I have my virtual environment set up as something called a Tor Env. So I'm going to select and it's going to look for available Python interpreters. So I'm not going to find it here. I have to find it under my Conda installed. So I have Mini Conda installed. And the one I want to use is this Tor ENV. That's the Python version I want to use. So I'm going to select that guy and say apply and say okay. And it tells me I have to restart our studio in order for this to take effect. So let us do that. Okay, so we're back. In a previous video, I went through an Yahoo Finance code that I've been creating. So what I want to do is I want to show you that code very quickly. Now, if you want more details about it, take a look at that video and I'll put it in the description below this video. So if you look at it, uh, you can see that it has some uh, libraries that I'm importing. And here I simply write some, some information about what kind of parameters you can pass on to the Yahoo Finance query. So this is for you to read through. You can read this on your own. When you get down here, I also have some argument parsers that basically is going to parse out the arguments I pass into this file. And again, I'm not going to dwell on this here because I have another video I went more in details about this. Now, here is the main code. I'm setting up a header. And here is the main call right here. Passing in the ticker, an interval, and a date range. And again, those are described above here. You can see all these values you can pass in. So if you look now, you have also some helper function. For example, Yahoo Finance returns a Unix type. So it's just a big number and I want to convert it into actually date looking date. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm parsing out the data that comes back from Yahoo Finance because it comes in the form of a JSON file. And here I'm building a dictionary and where I'm extracting out the different parts of that JSON file. And then I'm setting a reference here because what I want to do is I'm going to save this data into a SQLite database. Here I'm creating the connection and I'm setting up the cursor. And then I simply say, if the table does not exist, create it. Otherwise, just use it. And then down here, I'm basically looping through the records and I'm checking how many records I got by looking at the timestamp uh, dictionary object because that will give me a count, so how much, how many records I'm going to insert. And then I'm basically inserting row by row into the SQLite database. And then I'm committing the changes, and then I just have a cleanup here, you know, to close the connections and so forth. And down here is simply the settings of those arguments that comes into this file. So I'm loading them into some variables here. And then I just print it out so I can see it. And then I'm calling my function up here that's going to parse out the JSON data and so forth. That's what it happens here. This is the one that gets the data from, from the R finance. So that's the file. So what I want to do now is I want to go back to R Studio, And I have this little script set up here. So I'm going to use R's uh, reticulate package to run this, this file, this Python script, which is this one, by the way. And that file is located in this location. I tried a couple of things here, but this one seems to work for me. And the reason I use the system function is because I'm passing in these arguments. And this has like two dashes, but it's only so I can easily parse it out inside this file here. I can easily parse it out. All right. So when you look now, you can see you have the call to the Python script, and then you're passing in these arguments that will be handled inside that file. And finally here, because I have I always have issues with wherever it places this SQLite database. So here I'm forcing it in, so I know where it is. I'm forcing it into this environment, and I'm calling it stocks. 
All right, so what I can do now, we can clear this out. So I'm set up to run this, and then I'm going to hit Control Enter. And as you can see down here, I'm printing out some stuff, and the status code was 200, which is good. Here is the URL that was created from these arguments. So you can see, for example, you get the symbol here. You can see that being placed into this right here. You can see that it has the interval right here, one day, and the date range was three months, so that's this piece. And the file itself is just being saved out. I don't show that in this link here. All right, so let's take a look and see if we actually succeeded. So I have this downloaded uh, SQLite Studio. In the description, I'll put the link to where you can go and uh, get this. And it's kind of nice. If you want a lighter version of it, you can just do, go into this configuration, open configuration dialog, and you can set your own code color. So I just changed it because I'm using a dark version of it. And I can set the keywords and everything here by simply selecting this and saying OK. So I get a little nicer look and feel to the environment here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new database that exists in that Tor folder, the environment folder. Here I am, and sure enough, there is that stocks DB. So I'm going to select that, and it shows up. Let's test the connection. OK, it succeeded. Let's say OK. And over here now, you can see it shows up. So let me refresh that. So refresh database schema. Let's double click into it. And here is my table that was created. And if I want to now, I can go into data. And here you can see here's all the data. And I only got records for three months, I think it was, for Abby. Now, I could run this over and over again, obviously, to get more data coming in here. If I wanted to do another one, for example, like PLTR for Palantir, and run that guy. Okay, so it ran, and it finished. And if I go back to my SQLite database now, and let's refresh it again. And as you can see, now I should have more data. And you can see it here. Here is Palantir. So yeah, it, and it, you can see the data is up through today's date. Okay, because I'm sorting it here, uh, descending order. Okay, this looks a little uh, little better. 11.20 is today's date, you can see it down here. Okay, so that's how I can load data into a SQLite database. Okay, the second approach I'm gonna show you is, you can also use Python directly in here. I actually created a class called it Yahoo API. So let's take a look at that one. It's, this one is kind of messy because it does just work within it. The other file I have, let me open that, and that's a class. So all I'm do here is just get the data and, and just take it from there. So here you can see, here's the class, and I'm initializing these parameters here. And you can take a look at this yourself. I'll include it in my my GitHub repository for this video. And again, it does very similar things. It builds a URL to Yahoo Finance, as you can see here, and then it's going to return whatever the text is after you run the request, get the data from uh, Yahoo Finance. And again, here you're getting a status code coming here. Again, it converts the timestamps, it parses out the data here, and it builds a dictionary object here, as you can see. And then it returns that dictionary back. This is the main call that I'm making to make that happen. And I'm simply returning this data uh, dictionary coming back. So in back in R then, if you look, here's the code. I'm importing that class here from Yahoo API, import Yahoo API. And here I'm importing also Pandas. And again, my pointer is back to that Tor environment, Python location. So here I create a main function, and then I use if the name is equal to main, then you want to call this function so you have no pr problems while the code is running. I'm simply setting up a reference to my class. I'm passing in the parameters here, and then I'm getting the data back from that class. And then I create a data frame, like here. And then I'm printing the data frame like this. Okay, let me select the code here and run it. And here we go. So as you can see, in this case, I'm simply returning the, the data back in, in uh, this format here. Okay, so we can call this script now, because I saved it. And we can call that script from R. And what we can do is we can get the 
reticulate package loaded, and then just use this source underscore Python and set a reference to this location right here. And then we can run this code calling this file. And there you go. You can see it on the bottom here. It printed it out. And it tells me now I got a pandas data frame. Yeah, so that's how you can actually run Python scripts in R. Okay, uh, in a future video, I will be looking at how you can do very similar things in R. And obviously, this was not the best example of how to use Python scripts. You could have done things that are specific to Python. R has an exceptional good methods to generate data from APIs as well as uh, reading from databases, etc., as well as Python does. So in a future video, I will be looking at how you can extract data from, you know, sources like SQLite databases into R using some of the data integration methods that R is using, and also how you can call things like Yahoo Finance to get data from the internet. So stay tuned for that. I hope you like this video. And if you do, give me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. That'd be great. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.